My name is Richard Campbell, and I'm one of the founders of Humanitarian Toolbox. So the vision behind Humanitarian Toolbox was being able to let developers contribute their skills to charity without a lot of baggage. You know, software's not free, right? Software's free like a puppy is free. And it really takes a certain amount of infrastructure, planning and organization to keep the software healthy and growing. And you know, if you do a, you spend a weekend writing a piece of software for a charity, then you get to go home. The charity has to live with that software. And so what we really saw at HTBox was a need to bring together the infrastructure and sort of the planning to allow multiple volunteers to contribute over time to multiple projects and that we would worry about the sustainability part, collect the right requirements, put it in a place where anybody can contribute to it and anybody can use it too. You know, that's one of the powers of doing everything in open source. I don't have to pick one charity over another. I mean, we, we work closely with certain NGOs for our requirements then, but if anybody wants to use our software, it's on GitHub, knock yourself out. I've had experience with a bunch of the other mechanisms where people want to give, you know, they want to contribute their efforts and so forth. And that's one of the challenges you have is, you know, you can eke out just like we're doing here, you know, 48 hours or 72 hours worth of time to pour into some code. But at the end of the day, you have to go home, right? There is other work to do. And I've seen that model work too, you know, these other kinds of events. They're fine, you know, if somebody's dedicated enough to a charity to keep coming back and keep that software alive. But you realize, like every other software project, that's not just about development, right? That's project leadership, that's requirements gathering, that's all the care and feeding that goes into building software. And so what we focused on in HD Box is taking the experiences that they'd had there and saying, well, we're gonna take all the stuff off the table except the coding part. Right? It's our people in the charity that are doing the requirements gathering, doing the project management. All of those things are being taken care of so that developers can focus on development. Well, every project's a little bit different, right? And, and we get them from different sources. Once in a while, in the case of the project we're working on today with Already, we get a Greenfield project. That doesn't happen every day. There's lots of software that's always out, already out there. And Greenfield has certain luxuries too, in terms of what tooling you use and how you could approach it. You know, you get to start from scratch. But I think the most valuable thing we do is being able to, I don't want to say rehabilitate, but sort of breathe life into an existing project. Now, here's where a great group of people came around, a, typically a big event, you know, a hurricane or, or some major event and software got built and they all worked hard on it and it served a purpose. You've got an organization that's dependent on that software, but there's nobody knows how to compile it anymore. And so actually sort of bringing that piece of software back to life, getting it into a compilable state again, and bringing it into open source so that it's easy for folks to contribute to it and easy for folks to take advantage of it, I think it's the best thing we could be doing. You can look at it in very general terms, and that's, I think it's one of the things that's exciting about the software. An awful lot of disaster response software is on the ground at the moment during the disaster, sort of adrenaline-fueled stuff. That's not already. Already is a preventative app. So this is an app looking at situations where how can we take actions in advance of a problem? So the standard case study for already is smoke detectors into homes that don't have them. There's lots of reasons why someone might not have a smoke detector. And they're not that hard to come by and they're not particularly expensive. We get them donated all the time. The trick is installing them correctly. So the, what already is really about is finding folks who need smoke detectors, so that campaigning part to find folks who want them, and then coordinating that need with a qualified volunteer. So you imagine a, a volunteer firefighter willing to donate a Saturday to install smoke detectors properly. And we want to make his life as easy as possible. Now, we've been working closely with the Red Cross on this. And the one thing the Red Cross is amazing at is putting together volunteers efficiently. So they're very sensitive to this idea of don't waste your volunteers' time. How can I get the most done with someone's willingness to donate a, a Saturday to, the, to a project like that? So this piece of software can get their location, look at the locations where the needs are, group them up in a way that maybe he can get six or seven installs done in a day. That's your basic measure of success. How many smoke detectors do we get into people's homes protecting them from the potential of a fire? Think about um, first aid training, right? Somebody who's a qualified first aid trainer but they may not be a campaigner. They're willing to donate a weekend to help people learn how to perform CPR and so forth. We can work with a charity to run the software to do the campaign and connect that skilled person with folks who need the training. And I think you can do that over and over and over again. This is combining a need with a skill set.
And there's a lot of ways we can use this. One of the reasons we're so excited about the project is we see a future where this works in any country on a huge variety of things in any kind of charity. And that's always been our mission from the outset is this is a toolbox. Right? We're not necessarily building for any one given person. We need advice. We need to work with organizations that have a need for the project to make sure we build the right thing. But after that, let's spread it far and wide. So this is the weekend that already should be able to get to a minimal viable product. The first efforts on this project were actually done by a group from Microsoft back in June and July of 2015 and part of the Studio 2015 launch where we got a prototype done. We got the first taste of what this app could do. We got to show it to the Red Cross folks and get a feel for what was going on. That led to a whole new rack of work items. I mean, when you start to see the software run is where you first start thinking, okay, well, we're gonna need this, and we're gonna need that, and you know, how do we store the data? How do we properly, properly protect people's privacy? Uh, how do we interact with the, the, the volunteers the right way? Lots of little details. And so the work items went from a few good prototype features to this larger block of what's the things we must have to actually run a field trial.